Today I'm going to talk about a little bit of a diagnostic process to follow when trying to diagnose an EVAP leak. So today I've got this uh, Dodge Durango in the shop here and it's got a P0455 EVAP system large leak. And so if you're familiar with some of these older or vintage Chrysler systems with a, uh, a leak detection pump or even the, the newer ECM ones, they're a little different than what most technicians are used to. So uh, let's not start sweating it yet. <laughs> let's not go ahead and uh, throw a new gas cap on it or hook up our smoke machine just yet. Let's actually uh, back out of this. And I know it goes against a lot of stuff we've been taught, but I'm actually gonna clear the codes here a second. And so I'm gonna clear that out. And now I'm gonna use my scan tool. And I'm gonna go into system tests and then I'm going to run the EVAP monitor test. I wanna rerun this test to make sure that the problem is actually present today. So, you know, I haven't really done anything to the vehicle yet. I'm just simply using the scan tool here. And, and this is quick and efficient. So I'm gonna rerun the test and make sure that it actually does fail. You know, quite often we can fight a lot of these intermittent issues and it can be frustrating. I wanna make sure before I actually do any work that the problem exists right now. So, I'm gonna follow the instructions on the screen here. And it says the test will force the EVAP monitor to run. Any failures detected during the test will be stored as a DTC. Hopefully now you understand why I had to clear the code previously. So it says test may take up to 20 minutes to run. Engine RPM will ch be changed during the test. So I'm gonna start the engine. And then I will select continue and it says EVAP monitor test is in progress. So it's already raised the engine RPM, it's running through the test here. And so I'm gonna set the scan tool down. I'm gonna go pull in another car, start diagnosing it. And then I'll come back and review to see how my monitor is done. Let's pick it up there. Now, it's been actually about 10 minutes here and the, the scan tool says EVAP monitor completed. Check for code set during test and codes in one trip codes. So I'm gonna exit out. I'm gonna scroll up to codes. And I'm gonna read one trip codes. And voila, my P0455 has returned. So this is a valid code. Okay, so now we know that the code exists right now. Well, what do we do next? Oh well, yes, I'd like to hook up my, my uh, smoke machine and, and look for the leak. But let's go around the vehicle and do a little bit of a visual inspection before we get too carried away here. So here we are at the back of the vehicle with everybody's favorite EVAP component, the gas cap. Yes, I verified it's here and it, it's in place. At this point, I don't mind turning a couple clicks uh, just to make sure it's actually on there. You know, I'm sure you've all got plenty of stories of it just hanging on by a thread. So uh, I'm not saying it's good right now, but it's on there. Let's continue on with a little bit of a visual inspection and see what else we can find. Here we are under the hood and the vehicle is still still running. And one of the first things I'm gonna do here is, is use the audio clues. And I hear a little bit of a hissing sound, which kind of indicates a vacuum leak. So we've got several vacuum lines here associated with the EVAP system and I don't know if you can hear that, but whenever I touch this one that's supplying vacuum directly to the, the EVAP pump underneath the fuse box here, I'm getting a change in the hissing sound. So let me, aha, uh, uh -huh. there, if I look where the, where the hard plastic line meets the rubber hose, we've got a vacuum leak there. So that's certainly gonna affect our system and the system performance. If it's not getting adequate vacuum going to the pump, you know, it's gonna have uh, some ramifications on the EVAP test. So everything else underneath the hood appears to be in place. Uh, one thing I noticed is this vehicle's got a body lift on it. So it may be difficult to see, but there's a little bit of a gap here. And so maybe something else has changed uh, with the dynamics of the hoses. So I'm gonna make a note, we've got one vacuum leak. Let's go ahead underneath the vehicle and see if we can find anything else. So now I've got the vehicle lifted up in the air and I'm kind of continuing on with my visual inspection underneath the vehicle. 
And really the main components down here are the fuel tank, the fuel filler neck, uh, the EVAP canister, and of course the lines that interconnect everything. And as I went by the canister here, very quickly you notice that something's missing here. And if you also notice, there's a lot of sand on here, which is telling me between the lift, the bigger tires, uh, I don't have to be super sleuth here to determine this is used for off-road application. And I'm guessing somewhere along the lines, those EVAP lines came dislodged or, or missing. So if I can reach over towards the frame here and look at them, ah yes, we can kind of find the other end of them here. And by looking at them, um, either came into contact with the drive shaft or got melted on the exhaust somewhere here. But at this point, before we go any further, we need to replace the lines here, get things hooked up, and then I'm gonna do a retest again before I get real complicated with my diagnosis here. So by doing the visual inspection, we pinpointed a couple different leaks here. I'm gonna go ahead and repair, replace these lines. Then we're gonna come back, retest the system, and make judgment on the remaining components. All right. So I've gone ahead and replaced those lines, I replaced the vacuum line under the hood. And then I also replaced the lines, really that went from the front of the vehicle down to the canister, uh, the two of them there. And so now it's time to see if there's anything else we need to look into here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear codes again. I'm gonna clear that memory out. Then I'm gonna run the test again to see how successful we were. So back to the EVAP monitor test. Same menu again. Yes, it'll take 20 minutes. So I'm gonna start the engine a minute. And I'll select continue, and I'm gonna let it do its thing. All right, it's a moment of truth. This is EVAP monitor test completed. Check for code set during the test and codes in one trip. So we're gonna back out and go back into our codes menu. And I'm gonna to go to one trip. So I'm gonna to go to our codes menu. I'm in one trip here. Pull the codes and voila, no fault codes present. So we've gone ahead and corrected our issue here. Now, if the code had returned, now there's a couple different paths we're gonna to have to go down. You know, we've got those components again. We've got the purge solenoid, we've got the, the leak detection pump, we've got the canister, we've got the gas cap, the filler neck, all these different components yet that might have a leak. So we need to run separate system component tests, ensure they're working properly, and then pinpoint it down to, to the specific cause. So to recap this here, basically, I pulled the codes, I cleared the codes, which I know a lot of us have been taught not to do, but then I re-ran the self-test to ensure that the, the fault is actually occurring right now. And it was. So once that was in store, we just kind of ran a visual inspection across the vehicle, make sure the gas cap wasn't missing, but remember we found that vacuum leak under the hood. Then we went underneath and found that the lines uh, had been damaged at some point. So we went ahead and replaced the obvious stuff Reran the tests and we actually solved the problem here. Hopefully you got a little bit more of an insight on how to quickly and efficiently tackle an EVAP diagnosis.